Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today I'm going to be testing out Rick Martinez's recipe for alfajores with coconut dulce de leche from the December issue of Bon Appetit. So when I saw this cookie on the cover of the magazine, I was really curious about what it was because it's so beautiful. Reading through the recipe, I knew that I had to make this. Coconut dulce de leche, a sandwich cookie. I mean, what's not to love? So I'm really excited to give this one a go for you guys today. I do these Bon Appetit recipe tests every single Wednesday, so if you like this one, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Without any further ado, let's get into this recipe. So in a small saucepan, I've got one can of full fat coconut milk, one can of sweetened condensed milk, and a little kosher salt. And we're gonna pop this on the stove and bring it up to a boil. So I've got our mixture over medium high heat and I'm just gonna keep stirring it until it comes to a full boil. All right, and this mixture is starting to bubble around the edges. I think we're very, very close to being at a full boil. And it's perfect timing because our oven has just finished preheating. Great, all right, so that is a full boil. I saw my first giant bubbles spitting up at me. So now we're gonna transfer this boiling mixture into a 13 by nine pan. So I've got a glass Pyrex over here. So now we're gonna pop this into the oven for 40 to 50 minutes until it's a light caramel color and it starts to dry out a bit. Every about 15 minutes or so, I'm gonna just open up the door, give it a little stir to make sure that everything's heating evenly. All right, so our dulce de leche was in the oven for 53 minutes. It looks absolutely disgusting, just like the recipe said it would. So I know this is done because all of the liquid that was in the pan has fully cooked off. So after this mixture separated, there was a lot of water present in the pan and you could actually see it swimming around. So now this is looking nice and dried out. It looks very curdly. The color is a light caramel color. So I think that this looks really great in the worst way possible. So now I'm going to leave this in the pan to cool down to room temperature. So this dulce de leche has been chilling at room temperature for a little over an hour now, so it is definitely cool to the touch. And the recipe says that we want to pop this into a food processor and blend it until it's smooth. So I don't have a food processor, as we know, so I'm going to do this in the blender. I was debating whether I wanted to do blender or try to use my hand mixer with like a whisk attachment. I'm not sure exactly what needs to happen here. I don't know if these are lumps that are just getting smoothed out, in which case a hand mixer might work, or if these are lumps that need to be actually cut with a blade, which is maybe why it's going into the food processor. So I'm assuming that the blades in the food processor were going to be doing something for us to smooth this out. So I think the blender will probably work about equally well. I am surprised that this is working so well. I thought I was gonna really have to nudge it around and kind of knock it down. But this is very loose. It's kind of uh, working out exactly as I had hoped. And you guys, I'm just totally shocked. This looks beautifully smooth, smells incredible. I can't wait to eat this. And then I'm just gonna transfer this into a small bowl until we're ready for it. Look at that. This is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Great. So this looks absolutely amazing. I'm just going to set it aside until we're ready for it. So while our dulce de leche is cooking in the oven, we can go ahead and make the cookie dough. So in my stand mixer, I'm going to add in my two sticks of unsalted butter, along with a third of a cup of granulated sugar, and a little bit of kosher salt. And now we're going to cream the butter and sugar until it's light and fluffy. And whenever I'm creaming butter and sugar, I always use the scraper beater that came with my Breville stand mixer. What I like about this is it's got this kind of squeegee edge that scrapes the bowl for you while you mix. So that means that you don't have to stop and kind of do all this faffing about. Um, plus it speeds up the mixing time by 60%. So I am a huge fan of the scraper beater. So I'm going to slot this on here and we'll get it mixing. All right, so this is looking really nice and light and fluffy. So to this, I'm gonna add my pure vanilla extract, one egg yolk, and a quarter cup of honey. And we're gonna beat this together until the ingredients are all combined. Perfect, so this looks nice and evenly combined. You can see how beautifully fluffy this is, it looks great. 
For the dry ingredients, I've got AP flour and almond meal. Almond meal is basically a coarser grind of almond flour. I bought this for another recipe, so I still have leftover on hand, which is why I'm using it here. It's very fine, but you can definitely see that the kind of particle size is a little bit bigger than a normal flour. So I'm gonna give these a quick whisk just to get them evenly incorporated. Then all at once adding into the butter mixture. And now on low speed, we're just gonna mix until that flour is evenly incorporated. You don't wanna overwork this and give yourself a tough cookie. Great, so this dough looks nice and evenly incorporated. You can see it's really nice and thick. I can see the speckles of almond meal in there. It looks really nice. The final step with the dough is just to divide it in half so we can chill this in the fridge for a couple hours. All right, so now that I've got my two discs of dough wrapped up, I'm gonna pop these in the refrigerator for at least two hours. So our dough's been chilling in the refrigerator for a little over two hours, so now we're ready to roll this out. So I've got my parchment paper here. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour on the surface, just like Rick said. Let's get this rolled out. Great, so we've got our first sheet of cookie dough all rolled out. I've got my assorted cookie cutters here, so let's get cutting. One thing to remember is that these are sandwich cookies, so you need to have an even number of each shape. I think I've got these rolled out a little bit thicker than what the recipe called for. The recipe said to roll it out to an eighth of an inch thick, which is like super, super thin. I, I, I don't know that I could necessarily get the dough rolled that thinly. And even if I was able to roll it out that thinly, I don't know if I'd be able to get it off of this sheet of parchment paper because even with the ample amount of flour that I put on here, this cookie dough is wanting to stick. I'm gonna bake this first tray of cookies for seven to nine minutes until they're fully cooked and getting a little bit golden on the edges. All right, so this tray of cookies was in the oven for nine minutes. You can see it's just starting to pick up a little bit of color on the corners of the cookies. So I'm gonna let this cool down to room temperature. So while those cookies cool down, we can go ahead and cut out our second sheet of cookies. So this has been in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes. You can see the dough is super firm now, and we can go ahead and cut out our shapes. And you can see that when the dough is cold and rolled out, the cookies punch out nice and easily. I'm getting super crisp edges here. There's so much detail on the edge of my snowflake, and when I was doing the cookie the previous way, it was all kind of getting muddled together. So I think this just looks a lot nicer. And this is the method I always use when I'm making cutout cookies. So if you try this recipe, let me know in the comments down below how it worked rolling the cookie dough out. If you were able to get it to work the way that Rick said to, or if you had to try something a little bit different. Cool, so we can pop this second tray of cookies into the oven until it's fully baked. The cookies are done cooling, so I'm ready to move on to making my coconut topping. So I've got my coconut divided evenly across three bowls. I'm going to leave this one white, and then I'm going to do blue and pink. These are the same powdered food colorings that I used in the tie-dye cookie video. Next, I've got this luster dust, and so this is going to add a little bit of sparkle to the cookies. I found this on Amazon, and these are ready for decoration. So I've got my cooled cookies here, I've got my prepared bilsa de leche, and now I need to flip over half of the cookies. So I've got them all paired up. I'm just gonna flip over one half of them. And then to the flipped over half, we're gonna add one teaspoon of the dulce de leche. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and smear it onto the back. I think that this is probably more dulce de leche than you really need to cover this many cookies, but that's probably not a bad thing. I think it would be really tasty on some graham crackers. The final step is adhering the coconut to the top of the cookies and then assembly. So here I've got some honey that I microwaved for about 10 seconds. To that, I'm going to add two teaspoons of warm water. Working one at a time, I'm gonna brush the top of the cookie with the honey water mixture and then dip it face down into one of the coconut colors. And when you flip it up, if you have any bald spots, just go ahead and push the coconut back on there and then set it on top of its bottom half. And I'm giving a little bit of a push just to adhere the layers. I have a feeling this is gonna be a pretty messy process with the amount of honey I'm getting all over my fingers. And I'm not really finding that I'm having too many kind of blank bald spots when I pull the cookie up, so that's working well. I'm kind of rubbing the cookie around in the coconut when it's face down, and I think that seems to be working pretty well. My struggle with sandwich cookies is always, you do so much work and your yield is half of what it is because everyone's eating two cookies at once, which is coincidentally my favorite thing about eating sandwich cookies, but when you're making them, it's kind of demoralizing to see the amount of work and such a small yield. And these cookies are all done, so you can eat them right away. I'm gonna let them sit for 20, 30 minutes just to see if the honey firms up at all, and then we'll dig in and see how they taste. So the cookies are done being decorated. They've hung out for about 30 minutes. 
The coconut seems securely adhered and this is the finished product. So you can see that the top has a little bit of a sparkle. The coconut presence is really nice. The profile, you can see that beautiful dulce de leche kind of peeking out of the edges and the bottom is just a nice flat cookie there. So I am super excited to dig into this. The, the fragrance here is just absolutely incredible. The coconut aroma is so strong that dulce de leche just smells absolutely like mouthwateringly good. So I'm really excited to dig in. So um, I'm gonna snap this in half. Let's see how that goes. All right, so the cookie seems very tender, um, kind of like, um, like a thumbprint cookie, if you've ever had those before where it's a little bit crumbly, but it still wants to hold itself together. Definitely coconut forward is the smell here. Oh my God. Oh wow, this is so good. <laughs> this is really, really good. The almond flavor in the cookie comes through really well. Since I use the almond meal, I'm getting some of that coarser texture as well, which is very interesting. Um, and I can still see the presence of that almond meal speckling on the surface of the cookie. So I really like that. So the coconut flavor in the filling is very mild. I expected it to be very coconut forward since we use that entire can of coconut cream. However, it tastes more similar to like a normal dulce de leche. I don't know that I'm picking up on the coconut in the filling because the coconut on the top is so powerful, um, but still balanced at the same time. So overall, I am really happy with these cookies. I think that the appearance of them is absolutely beautiful. The combinations of flavors work so well together. The dough was easy to work with. The filling was a little bit time consuming, but super tasty and I've got leftovers so I can enjoy that later on as a Sunday topping or just with a spoon. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you give these a try. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.